to, amen, just give me one second. Yes, let's open our Bibles to um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 2. Yes, please. It says, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And today I bring that same word to you today, grace and peace um, to you from our God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. The grace to keep fighting on and not to give up in a time like this. The grace to believe that God is with you. The grace to say, God, I know I'm standing. I know I will not fail. And the peace of God will grant you comfort to let you know that this God is behind all this. The peace, even for those who are falling or perhaps for those who have been afflicted or contracted this virus, to tell them that peace be still, God will grant you healing. And I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. And this word came to my heart as the first thing I want to say to the church today, the first thing I want to say to people today, because it's peace and grace only comes from God. Many people look onto CNN, some people look onto the politicians, look onto newspapers, and some are even waiting on scientists to, to get that, comf uh, that comfort from them. But the thing is this, the government cannot comfort us. They're trying, I'll be honest, yes, they're trying all they can in their human abilities, but they themselves are human. And that's why the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 5, which reads, said, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Jeremiah 17, 5. But I pray that our trust will be in God in Jesus' name. So again, I just want to give you that word, grace and peace to you from our God, our, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So today's service will be quick, like um, the um, apostle said in the beginning. He said we'll give ourselves to prayer and to the word. And I'll tell you this incident or this crisis going on right now has actually brought everything down to their basics. Today, virtually everything is now going back to their basics. Church is now focusing on just the basics. Let's do prayer, let's do the word, and let us praise God. All those other extras have now been taken out. So God is actually doing something. Amen. And today, by the grace of God, we'll be looking at defeating Sennacherib. Sennacherib, Kerub, amen. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name, defeating Sennacherib. And I pray that God himself will show himself in our lives in Jesus' name. So in this teaching, we'll be looking at what is Sennacherib? Who is that person? What is that personality? What is it that, that, that is challenging us? I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus, defeating Sennacherib. Let's open our Bibles to the book of um, Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Whatever we think we're going through has been done already. I can tell you the Bible is a very complete book. That was why he said it is sealed. No one should add, no one should take away from it. No, whatever you think you're going through, there's always something that God has, has spoken resisting, defeating the Sennacherib in your life. Now I tell, like I said, every event that I can even ever imagine. The Bible said in the book of Ezekiel, it said, there's nothing new under the sun. Everything is the same. It keeps repeating itself. The plague has happened many, many thousands, uh, hundreds of years ago, and now it's coming again. Let's read Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past. For everything that was written in the past. Was written to teach us. Yes. So that through endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Amen. He said everything that was written was written for us. That everything the Israelites went through was done for us. And I can tell you the things we are going through today, either as a nation, either, either as, as the whole world itself. That's already, we've seen an example of it. There are times that we have fought battles that it was quite easy to deal with. But today, it seems as if we are fighting a battle against a giant that it seems un unsurmountable. A giant that we cannot challenge. A giant which we are afraid to challenge. A giant that cannot be seen and yet is afflicting people. A giant that seems so big and yet so small. All you just need to do is touch him. And perhaps this could, might not be a coronavirus for you. It could be other giants in your life. It could be something that you are dealing with, you are challenging in your life. This Sennacherib 
has some unique characters to show what it is. So when I'm, when I'm using, so when I use the word Senecarib today, I want you to think of that power, that, uh, that, that personality, that, that principality that is standing against you, that is telling you you cannot go forward. And I'm going to look at 10, 10 characteristics of this Senecarib today. And I will tell you, like I said, coronavirus fits one of, the, that fits one of those personalities. So let's open our Bibles to the book of um, first, Second Kings. That will be our text today. It's quite lengthy. Second Kings chapter 19. We read from verse 22 to 37. We're going gonna, gonna to read the story there. Amen. If you're there. And I'm pleased for those. I know we are all home. So I, I want to encourage you. Let this be a time you really focus. Please, this is not the time to say I want to listen to God's word. I will be cooking same time. Leave your meals Turn off the stove. I want you to sit down with a pen and with your Bible and begin to mark things on your, on, on, um, on your, um, on your Bible. Amen. So let's go. Second Kings 19, we'll read from verse 22 to 37. Okay, let's so read. Who, yes? Who is it? You who have, is it? You have ridiculed and blasphemed. Amen. So the, the first thing I want you to underline is ridiculed, blasphemed. Yes? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers, you have ridiculed the Lord, and you have said, With my many chariots, I have ascended the height of the mountains, the utmost height of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the choicest of its junipers. I have reached its remotest part, the finest of its forest. I have dug wells in foreign lands and drunk the water there. With the soles of my feet, I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago, I ordained it. In days of old, I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you have turned fortified cities into piles of stone. Their people drained of power, are dismayed and put to shame. They are like plants in the field, like tender green shoots, like green sorry, like grouse, uh, grass sprouting on the roof, scorched before it grows up. But I know where you are and when you come and go and how you rage against me because you rage against me. And because your insolence has reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my beat in your mouth. And I will make you return by the way you came. This will be the sign for you, Ezekiah. This year you will eat what grows by itself. And the second year what springs from that. But in the third year sow and reap. Plant vineyards and eat their fruit. Once more, a remnant of the kingdom of Judah will take root below and bear fruit above. For out of Jerusalem will come a remnant. And out of Mount Zion, a band of survivors, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter the city Amen. or shoot an arrow there. Amen. He will not come before it with, the, with shield or build a siege wrap against it. By the way that he came, he will return. He will not enter the city, declares the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. That every power that symbolizes Shin Ekerub in our life, the God of heaven will defeat them and will turn them to shame in Jesus' name. So when I speak about Shin Ekerub, it's I speak of a personality, a power that, has, that is challenging your life. I'm sure when you fought, when there are some things, battles you fought in your life, you say those, those ones were easy for me to deal with. But it seems like there's a power they are fighting right now, or perhaps you are encountering in your business, in your career, in your marriage, that seems like it's Shin Ekerub. And we're going to look at 10 um, characteristics of this Shenanker robe. And the first thing is this. These are powers, uh, these are situations that blaspheme and want to ridicule God. The first thing, and that's, all, that's what sets Shenanker apart from any other power, from any other challenge you've been facing. All the other, all the uh, challenges you've been facing has never tried to defile God. But one thing about Shenanker is this, they are always trying to make God nothing in your life. They wanted to say, but I'm a Christian. I hear people are saying, he's a Christian, and he has been fasting and praying, but prayer has not answered. Yes, other people have gone to men of God to pray, and they have been answered, but as soon as you go there to pray, it is, it's not answered. He wants to ridicule God in your life. He wants to blaspheme and say, you cannot, nothing can save you from my hands. And that was what Sennacherib wrote to King Ezekiah. He said, let's read um, Isaiah chapter 37, 10 to 13. Isaiah 37, 10 to 13. If you're there, you can read, please. Isaiah 37, verse 10 to 13. It says, yes. Say to Ezekiah, king of Judah, 
Yes. Do not let the God you depend on deceive you when he says. Yes. He said, do not let the God you, you believe in deceive you. You can imagine this power is not even challenging us. Ezekiah alone is actually defiling God. What is that thing in your life that is challenging God in your life? Yes. You have, you, you've, you've heard other people go to, 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 to this pastor and they pray and it happened. But you prayed. It didn't happen. Other people say, when this thing happened to me, I fasted 40 days and it came to be. And you have fasted 40 days and even more and nothing is happening. Go on, please. So do not let the God you depend on deceive what you when he says. Yes. Jerusalem will not be given into the hands of the king of Assyria. Yes. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries. Yes. Destroying them completely. This power is saying that any God that is before me, I have challenged them. People have gone to Babalawo and yet they could not get what they, what they want. If I'm challenging you, even the Babalawos cannot overturn it. Even the imams cannot overturn it. Even the other foreign nations, the foreign gods cannot overturn it. So don't tell me your, that your own Yeshua will overturn it. Yes, go on. And will you be delivered? Yes. Do the gods of the nations that were destroyed by my predecessors deliver them? The gods of Gozan, Haran, Rez, Rezeb, and the people of Eden who were in Tel Asa. Where is the king of Hamath? Or the king of Arpad, where are the kings of Leh, Sephavim, Hena, and Eva? Amen. This power, the first thing about the king, the power of Sennacherib, are the powers that are challenging God in your life, telling you, where is your God? Can your God deliver you from my hands? Can your God deliver you from this thing that you are going through? Like I said, coronavirus, the COVID-19, actually fits also in this profile, saying, can you indeed say, I'm a Christian? Can you indeed say, because you're a Christian, I will not afflict you? I pray that the God of heaven will help us in Jesus' name. So the first thing we see about this power is this. These are the powers that try to destroy people's destiny, regardless of your faith or the level of your faith. It's not only considering your faith, but it's saying, even if you say you serve the God Most High, I will defeat you. But we'll see how to defeat that power. And I pray the God of heaven will bring them down under our feet in Jesus' name. The second characteristic of um, the, uh, the, um, uh, the powers of Sennacherib is that they are the powers that raise their voice and lift up their eyes in pride. Remember, all these characteristics are not just being brought from the air. We are bringing it out from the scriptures. Like we said, our text is taken from 2 Kings chapter 19. So you can see the first thing he said is this. I'm the God. He said, where is your God? He was challenging the God. That was the first thing he did. The second thing is this. He said, the king Zenekerib is the one that raises his voice and lifts up his eyes in pride. There are powers and situations that actually are afflicting some of us. That even before you even call your name, before you even introduce yourself, that problem has introduced itself on your behalf. Now people call you the blind Bartimaeus. People call you, oh, that man that has been married for 10 years but does not have a child. People say, oh, that man that works so hard but only sleeps in his house for two days a week. That man that, that left Nigeria and came to North America and yet does not have anything to for show for up for it. Even before you speak, he's raising up his voice against you. He's lifting up his eyes in pride. Let's open our Bibles to the book of John chapter 1 verse uh, for, the, uh, for the 6a. I'll read for the 6a. Nazareth, can anything good come out from it? Imagine, it is not, people are not even saying that we should even, can any, but it's already been said. A voice is already speaking against Nazareth that nothing can come out. But I pray that even as Jesus Christ himself came out from Nazareth, where Zenekerib said, nothing will come out. I pray that goodness will come out from your lives in Jesus' name. That the powers that are raising their voices against your destiny, the powers that are raising their voices against your life, that the God of heaven will be silenced in Jesus' name. That power that lifts up his eyes in pride against your life and say, this one will not go past this level. Those are the powers of Zenekerib. And I pray the God of heaven will defeat them today. In Jesus' name. The third uh, characteristic is these powers have many chariots. Indeed, they actually have many chariots. These powers actually have many confederations. These are powers that in their camp, they are filled with all kinds of powers. That as soon as you, that, that you can see, there are powers fighting against you from your father's house. They have confederations from your father's house from your mother's house, from your in-law's house. And even when some people say, okay, let me run away from my country of origin. Let me go to a new place. As soon as you enter that, that new place, even that powers of Senekerub actually also come to bring those chariots together and say, 
we the geographical powers will still defeat you. If you read the book of Psalms, chapter 3, verse 1, Psalms 3, 1 said, when uh, David was running away from his son. You can imagine, David was a man who fought all the days of his life. From the day he was shepherding sheep, he's been fighting uh, bear, lion, Goliath, he's, the Philistines. He was even fighting his master. Now, again, he's a king now. He's even now fighting his own son. The Bible said, O oh Lord, I have so many enemies. So many are against me. If you are that kind of person that you see that as soon as you walk into a place, there are always powers fighting against you. Everywhere you work, nobody likes you. All the bosses you have had have always hated you. All your subordinates have always ignored you. These are the powers of the Senate And you need to fight them. These are the powers that are confederating and saying, God, ye, O ye of far countries. Powers that come from your father's house and align with your mother's house. Powers that come from your mother's house that align with your in-law's house. Powers that come from your in-law's house and align with the geographical areas and say, we will not let this man succeed. There are people who did not succeed while they were back home, but at least when they got here, doors open for them. But there are some people that the powers of Sennacherib is still fighting against them and saying, you will not go anywhere. These are the powers of Sennacherib. The number four um, characteristic of this power is this. There are powers that have ascended to the heights of the mountains and they have cut down the tallest cedars. These are powers and situations that have made men to, 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 that, who have accomplished great things to become nothing. Imagine the first engineer ever to graduate in Nigeria died in a shack. That is the power of Shanakiro that makes a man of the highest mountain to be cut down. A man who will say, my daddy is a doctor, my mom is an engineer, but now I am nothing. I don't even have a degree. From the highest, he cut them down. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Job. Because of our time, let's quickly uh, go in, um, speeding through. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Job, chapter 29. I'll read, uh, because of our time, I'm just going to pick some verses. I will encourage those who are at home right now, read the whole um, Job 29 and read um, Job 30. You'll see Job in his prime. Let's read Job um, 29. I'll read from verse 4. He said, Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house. You can imagine, that was when everything was going well. The young man saw me. Now I'm reading verse 8. The young man saw me and stepped aside, and the old man rose there to their feet. He was a man of dignity, a man who became a, the tallest cedar in his, in, in, his, in his place, a man who has become the highest of all mountains. Young men see him and they step aside. Old men see him and stand up from the seat to say, Sit down first. But let's read uh, Job 31. He said, But now they mock me. Men younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheep dogs. Imagine people that were not worthy to even help him to be one of his workers that would keep his sheep dogs. Now they are the ones that make him mockery of him. That is the power of Shenakarov, where you have been a man of dignity. Now everybody looks at you and starts turning their way, face away from you. Today, you are, it's no, you are no longer considered anything. Your name, your father's name used to be a great name. But now, it's nothing. I remember growing up, um, the name uh, uh, Abiola, um, um, uh, what's the name of that uh, rich man? M.K. or Abiola was a name which everybody looked at. But today, no, there's nothing about that name. Nobody even hears the name anymore. That's the power of Senekirub. Powers that plagued Job. Powers that plagued people who were very high before and cut them down to make them nothing. Number five. The powers that reach the most remote parts and the finest of places. These powers do not only plague the poor, but you can even see them in high places. And that's why people said, it seems like coronavirus is, is, is one of the diseases of the rich. Because honestly, you will assume that the rich are quite hygienic. They, everything is clean. Everything is uh, proper. They, they won't just touch anything they find. But yet, virtually um, most um, leaders of nations have it. Trudeau's wife. 
Um, I think the royal family. There were some confirmations. There were people from the royal family. Uh, Prince Charles. Um, there were actors. Have it. Uh, senators in Africa. They are all catching it. It does not only plague the poor, but right now it's even going for the rich. The powers that fight against those who are even reputable in your home. The only person that says, yes, I'm a man in your family, is now saying, where are my clothes? The only person that says, yes, God has raised me up as a mighty man, is also fighting against something in his house. Not only is this power, uh, there are powers that make pastor's children, imagine a pastor's son, to say, now I'm, I'm, I am an homosexual. Dickens' daughters now becoming prostitutes. Powers that not only afflict people of uh, beneath, but also you can see them in high places. If somebody says, oh, somebody became um, um, a robber or became a deviant, if somebody's son in church became a deviant, you will assume that it will be somebody whose parents are not, are, are not devoted in some way. I'm not saying that pastor's children don't have issues. They, most of them actually have lots of issues. But the thing is this, that's the power of Shanekirub that targets the finest of, of them all and say, I will bring them down. The powers that looked at the sons of uh, Eli and say, I will make your destiny nothing. That you and your father will die in one day. Those are the powers of Sennacherib. The powers that does not only afflict the, the pew, but it's been found to be afflicting the pulpit. The power of Sennacherib. The powers that reach most, the most remote parts and are seen in the eyes of eyes or finest of places. Let's open our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 1. 2 Kings 5, 1. Now, Naaman, captain of, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord has given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, he was, but he was a leper. The power of Sennacherib still fought against him. He was a captain. High standing before his master, the king. Honorable before people. God gave him victory through him. But still, the power of Sennacherib said, I'll make you a leper. The powers that made Naaman, who was a man of honor, to still suffer shame. The powers that make pastors to still say, my daughter became pregnant out of wedlock. Powers that make pastors children to say, I'm not, people might say, why am I calling all those pastors? Powers that make Christians children to not say, I don't believe in God anymore. All that is fake. That's the power of Sennacherib. Number six, the powers that dig well in foreign lands and drink from there. Remember, all these are characteristics that came from that letter. He boasted. I'm the one that dig a well in a foreign land and I will drink from it. It is one thing for those who live in, um, for the, so, so those of us who grew up in the northern part of Nigeria, we know it takes a very long time to dig a well because the water is far, far, far beneath, it's far beneath the earth. And even after you dig the well, you have to wait for it to settle before you start drinking from it because you don't want to drink dirt and everything. You have to wait for some time before that well is now fit for drinking. This power is saying, I'm the one that will begin that problem. And even in 30 years, I'll still be found there. Some of us can say, yes, there was a time in our lives when we lacked. But today, it's no longer afflicting you anymore. Some people will say, there was a time in my life when I was a failure. But it's no longer afflicting you anymore. But there are some powers that are saying to you, I have dug a well and I will drink from it. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 27. 2 Kings 5, 27. Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and to your descendants forever. That's what I just want to bring out. That leprosy is not only on Gehazi, but also to all his children and his children's children. That's the power of Sennacherib that digs a well and makes sure he drinks from it. The issue that afflicted your grandfather, the same way your grandfather 
divorce your, uh, his, your, great, uh, your grandmother. Also, your father divorced his own wife too. And now too, you are about to divorce your own wife. The power of Sennacherib that says, I will dig a well and I'm still drinking from it. The power that says that your father died at 40. He hung himself. Your grandfather died at 40. He hung himself. And he, now you're 39. And for some reason, the power, something is telling you, kill yourself. Things are, all the things around you are looking so hard that you cannot figure a way out. The powers of Sennacherib. The powers that say, I will dig a well in a foreign land. And I will drink. I will dig a well in a foreign land and I will drink from it. Powers that boast that they will stay long enough to make sure that well is completed. That affliction stays in your life and that affliction persists. The powers of Sennacherib. Number seven. The powers that the powers that by their souls dried up the streams of Egypt. This the Sennacherib against a man are powers that drive up all the resources in a man. Imagine the inheritance that was passed on was finished in a year. That is the power of Sennacherib that dries up all your resources. Some people only got a contract of one million naira, and that changed their destiny. Their destiny became perfect. They, from there, they never came back anymore. But you, the resources keep coming, and yet it keeps draining. Why? If the food of the um, uh, powers of Sennacherib is in your life, drying up the streams. Yes, you, everybody keeps bringing money to you and giving you resources, and yet there's nothing about it. Let's open our Bible to the book of Luke chapter 15. We're going to read the story of um, the prodigal son. You can imagine. His father built an empire. The youngest son, youngest son came, Dad, I want mine. He broke it into two, gave the youngest son. The youngest son left, and even from the one that still was remaining, became more. But the powers of Sennacherib will not allow the prodigal son to succeed with it. Let's read. Long, not long after that, the younger son got together at all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in a wild living. The powers of Santa Carob caused him to squander. He dried up all the resources. After he had spent everything there, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. The powers of Santa Carob. That dries up all the resources. Your father has sold his, his house to send you to university, and yet you don't have a job. Your mother sold a car to send you to North America, and yet you can't get ahead. Your, your uncles and everybody in your clan said we will send you to Lagos to go look for a job or somewhere to, 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 to at least you can be the one that will save us, and yet it seems as if all those resources dried up. Powers of Sennacherib. Number eight, the eight characteristics of these powers are the powers that causes for the five cities to become a pile of stones. Powers that cause for the five cities to become a pile of stones. David built an empire, passed it on. The 12 tribes of Israel passed it on to Solomon. Solomon made it greater and better than what, than what his father gave to him. The Bible said in the book of um, in the book of First Kings chapter ten verse twenty seven, said the king made silver as common in Jerusalem as stones. That's how much uh, um, Solomon built Jerusalem. And cedars as plentiful as sycamore fig trees in the foothills. And when he passed it on. So his own son, Rehoboam, the powers of Sennacherib made him to lose it in one day. He lost 10 to a man who does not even have any, um, um, does not have any royal blood in him. He lost to that man. And only two stood with him because of, the, of his father, not because of him. Only two gave allegiance to him because of their father. 
and ten left. These are powers that make for the five cities to become a rubble of stones. Where your father have said, the money I have, my children, children can never suffer. But when it came to you, it became a rubble of stones. That is the power of Sennacherib. The power that wants to cause what has been laid up for you as glory to become a thing of shame. Powers that defy what has been laid up for you to say this will be an inheritance and blessing to become a thing of saying, wow, we never believed that he could become such a man. That's the power of Sennacherib. Number nine, the powers that drained people of their own power, their own strength, their own ability. It drains power. These are powers that challenge people that when they start something with great strength, along the way they say, I can't do it anymore. I've been married, but now I don't think I want to be married anymore. I'm giving up. My husband is now a cheat. I can't, I can't stand him anymore. Yes, you knew he was a cheat before you married him. You knew he was actually a playboy. And then you were willing to, you, you had the strength to keep praying and keep interceding for him. But now the power of Zenakerub has drained your strength, has drained your power that you could not even do it anymore. Imagine the apostles of Jesus Christ, the disciples, who actually saw the miracles Jesus Christ did, the 70 who went out two by two, and demons actually bowed to them. They cast out demons. And yet, the Bible said in the book of John, chapter 6, verse 66, said, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. The power of Sennacherib. Yes, I was once a Christian. I once preached God's word. I once uh, began um, the fellowship in my university. But now, you're not even a Christian anymore. The power of Sennacherib has drained that power inside of you. You used to pray, but right now, prayer is no longer your lifestyle. That's the power of Sennacherib. Power that makes someone who is a follower of Christ to turn back to the, at the point of glorification. And number 10, the last uh, characteristics of this power is these are the powers that causes people to be in dismay and to be put to shame. Powers that causes people to be in dismay and be put to shame. Powers of Sennacherib are powers that make that makes a man to put to bow down his head in shame. It makes a man to reject his high school reunion invites because he knows that when he gets there, people will make mockery of him. When he was in high school, he was considered the cutest boy in school. Now you see him, you think he was hit by a lorry. Powers that makes people to see their mates and turn around. Power that makes people to say, God, where am I? Second Samuel chapter 17, verse 23 reads, When Aito fell, saw that his advice had not been followed, he saddled his donkey and set out for his house in his hometown. He put his house in order and then hanged himself. So he died and was buried in his father's tomb. The powers that makes a man to put his head down in shame. The Bible said in the days of uh, Ahithophel, his words were like the words of God. They cancel from the throne of God. And now, it has become nothing. Now nobody considers him anymore. The power that made the first son to lose his place, like um, Reuben, Pray God we help us in Jesus' name. One thing that we all need to understand about this power is this. It is different for every one of us. To some, to some people, like I said, this power, yes, they have the financial stability, but it stands against them as barrenness. To some people, yes, they have the children, but it stands against them as uh, of, like stagnancy. They're not moving forward. They're not moving backward. They just remain in one spot. To some people, it is coronavirus. And I will tell you right now to the whole world, this is the power of Sennacherib. A power that is saying, yes, I am so strong, people are afraid of me, but yet no one can see me with their physical eyes. I will cause everything to be at standstill. I will dig water, I will dig well, and I will drink from it. 
I will cripple everything to his knees. Even your gods will not be able to save you from me. These are the powers of Sennacherib. Now that we have seen all this power, this, this, this Sennacherib himself, how can we defeat this Sennacherib? God is not just saying that, oh, look at this giant. But how can we defeat it as God gave Ezekiah victory that day? I'm just going to talk about those three things. And let me tell you, to be honest with you, if you I, I'll say this plainly. If you are really dealing with a power that has mimicked all these ten qualities that I've said, or has all, some of these qualities, you need deliverance. You need to pray. You need to break it. You need to go into warfare. But for the purpose of this teaching, I'm just going to highlight those three. Those three. Just for, for, um, for just our knowledge. Just three. And I will encourage you, perhaps you need more resources, call, uh, call the church, talk to somebody for, uh, for more um, prayer and um, resources. The first thing you need to do is go to God in relationship. When we say go to God, we, all we're simply saying is this, have a relationship with God. Be born again. God will not fight for those who are not his. God will not take out his time to do what for you, what he is for his child. Bible said that the children, uh, they say God does not give the children's bread to the dogs. Yes, as a dog, you've been enjoying some crumbs. You got a promotion. You got um, um, one healing today. You got that. But you need to be a child of God to have access to everything he has. Today, um, everything that belongs to my father, it's mine. If I go back to Nigeria today, I'm not going to stay in an hotel. I'm going to my father's house. His bed, I will lay down there. It's mine. But somebody who is just a friend will first ask, can I come? And can I stay? Where should I stay? The first thing is this. You want to defeat this Sennacherib. You need to be a child of God. And this is not plain church. This is not that my name is John, Peter, or whatever you call yourself. You might call yourself anything you like. You can be the son of a pastor. You be whatever. But as long as you don't have a relationship with God, that was why we said the first thing is this. Go to God in relationship. Have a relationship with God. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25 really said, But this is what the Lord says. Yes, captives will be taken from the warriors and plunder retreat from the fears. From Sennacherib the fears, it will be retrieved. I, I will contend with those who contend with you and your children. I will save when you become a child of God. Then the battles that are challenging you are challenging God. God said, you are the apple of his eyes. Then if anyone wants to touch you, that means they are trying to touch God himself. The first thing is, you must be a child of God. And perhaps you've been playing church and you want to give your life to Christ. This is a very good time. With all that is going around, there's no more time. The Bible said in the book of Romans, it said, for, the, for, the, for that day, it's closer than when we first believed. When I first gave my life to Christ, I can tell. I'm not the person who will say, oh, I hear people say, oh, it's closer. You can tell that it is closer now than when we first believed, when we first gave our life to Christ. Today, the Antichrist has been able, can, can actually manifest himself, but because the world right now is unified in fear. The Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 6, he said, And I saw the first seal, when he broke the first seal, a white horse, and the rider had a, was grieving, a crown was given to him, and he had a bow, and he was bent on conquest. Today, we are at that time where everything seems to be we need to be all be one. Today, people will tell you, if you see people being whipped, I saw a video where they were whipping people out of mosque. To me, tell them to leave in place. I don't think you have to abuse anyone to the point where you're whipping them. If you want to arrest them, arrest them. Not whip old men with whips. I think that's drunk with justice. Yes, they shouldn't be there. Yes, it's for their own good that they shouldn't be there. But you shouldn't be whipping them. But today, people are saying, yes, they should whip them. I don't know why they're still going to mosque or going to church. Now the world is unifying itself. Today is closer than when we first believed. Now the Antichrist can actually manifest. You can't buy or eat. In, in China, I was reading, uh, I was listening to an, uh, um, a video somebody posted. He said, in China there are three codes. Green, yellow, and red. Those who are afflicted or who have been contaminated are coded red. Those who are possibly, maybe you might have been somewhere, are colored yellow, and those who are free from it are colored green. And only those who have the green status are allowed to actually go out. 
That means you can see, you know, I'm not saying that's a mark of the beast, but we are getting to a point where it is quite easy to do such things like that. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is the time. Number two, go to God in prayer. Go to God in battle. Go with God into warfare. Bible said in the book of Psalms 18, verse 17, he said, he rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. The powers of Sennacherib are powers that you yourself cannot defeat. The world itself today cannot defeat Sennacherib at any point. We could coronavirus today. And now we need to go to God in prayer. When the powers of Sennacherib rose up, up against um, Ezekiah, the thing he did, he knew, I don't have the enough army. Because he, 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 uh, Sennacherib told um, the, uh, King Isaiah, I hear you are trying to mobilize the army against me. Hmm. You better don't try because I will clear everything away. And he did. And he actually, he meant it. And this is why he, Ezekiah did not waste his time. All he did was he went to God in prayer. Now I'm asking you, you want to fight against that Sennacherib of your, of your destiny. You say that Kerub that is fighting against your life. Then go to God in prayer. Let, go, let God be your shield. Let him become your butler. If you read the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 15, sorry, 51, every time Jesus Christ will heal, heal a man, he will ask them, what do you want me to do for you? Some of them might say, is Jesus Christ, does he not really know? Yes, God knows that we are dealing with the Sennacherib right now as a world. God knows that you are dealing with the Sennacherib in your family. God knows that you are dealing with the Sennacherib in your marriage. But you still need to go to him in prayer and tell him. For God to intervene for you, men ought to go to God and ask for his, interve ask for his intervention. I say, God, I invite you. God is not a dictator. Blam Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when he said, come, he still asked him, in um, that Mark chapter 10, verse 51, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go to God in prayer. Let this be a time of prayer. It's not a time to complain to men. It's not a time to start saying, oh, you know, this and I carry with so strong. It's a time to say, God, you are the only one that can help me. And number three, go to God with, in your living. And we just, we just want to simplify it so people can just understand. The book of Isaiah chapter 49 verse 25 where we read earlier said that even the lawful captives, some people have made themselves lawful captives to Sennacherib. They themselves have become, a, 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 they, they made themselves a, 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 something that should be punished. Jesus Christ said in the book of John chapter 14, verse 30, he said, the prince of this world comes and he finds nothing in me. Can you say, when the prince of the world comes, will he find something in you? Will he find a flaw in you? Some people will say, God, I want to be blessed, and yet you are into fraud. God cannot bless such things. God cannot bless um, lies. God, I want my marriage to work, and yet you're still floating around. Bible said in the book of um, Proverbs 26, verse 2. Proverbs 26, 2. He said, A costless curse will not alight. A curseless curse will not alight. If that curse does not have a basis, it cannot stand. If you have not done anything, Genesis chapter 4, verse 7 said, If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Then, if you don't do what is right, then you'll be rejected. Go to God. Let God go in your living. Reflect Christ. Reflect God. Even today, like they say, even in this uh, coronavirus that we're dealing with, even in this coronavirus that we're dealing with, if you go with the stipulations, it will not afflict you. Wash your hands. Keep the social distance. Isolate yourself and your family. Do the, those hygiene, hygienic things. Then you, I, you, God will, will help you. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Now, we're just quickly, because of our time, I'm just going to look at the promises from God against this Shenakarim. If you actually do those three things we said, 
go to God in relationship, go to God in prayer, and go to God in living. Then you see the seven things man make manifest in your life against this Sennacherib. Now the first one is this Bible said in the book of Second Kings nineteen twenty nine. You can just mark that. He said, "This year you will eat what grows by itself, and the second year what springs from that." Even in this way, people are saying, "Oh, this coronavirus." Bible, God is saying that from even from it there will be a blessing if. You go to God, defeat Sennacherib. Eat what grows by itself and what springs from it. Even from this situation, God Himself will show Himself. Number two blessing is found in that same twenty-nine, where He said, "In the third year, imagine the first two years, you don't even have to do anything. From that even that situation, God Himself said, I'm going to show myself.' And in the third one, He's saying right now, He said, in the, he said, in the third year, you will sow and reap." Plant vineyards and, the, and eat their fruit. If you can really pray and resist this Senaikiru, then you will plant and you will eat from, from it. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, verse um, 8, say, Never again will strangers eat your bread, nor foreigners drink your wine. But you who sow it will eat of it and you will drink of it. If you go to God, Against this uh, Senekeru, God is saying, you will sow and you will reap. Number three, is God is saying that Senekeru will not enter into your city, neither shoot an arrow there. Second Kings 19.32, you will not enter the city, city, nor shoot an arrow there. Coronavirus will not enter into your home. It will not affect anyone. If the arrows of that COVID-19 we not we not have we not come near your whole household in Jesus' name. The number three promise God is saying is this: that Shenai Kerub will not enter into your family, and his arrows will not be shot there. The Shenai Kerub that has afflicted your father, your grandfather, the Bible is saying, if you come to me, I, it will not come into your own household. It will go back to them. Number four. Sennacherib will return by the way he came. If you read 2 Kings 19.33, by the way he came, he will also return. The powers that afflict you, the Bible is saying that it will go back to the ascenders. He said in the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 7, he said they will come in one way, but they shall flee in seven ways. The scripture clearly says, it says, surely they shall gather. Let me tell you, Sennacherib's are bound to challenge you. But the Bible is saying, because it's not of my own doing, they will fall because of you. And I pray that every power that has risen themselves against you will fall for your sake in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, a promise from God. God himself, God himself said, I will defend this city and save it. Second Kings 19.34, I will defend this city and save it. For everyone who said, now God, I'm taking you as my defense. You have now become my vaccine. God is saying, I will keep you and I will save you. Number six, the Bible is saying that he sent forth his angel to the camp of the enemy and he destroyed them. Second Kings chapter 19 verse 35, that night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death a hundred and eighty five thousand in the Assyrian camp. When people got up the next morning, they were all dead bodies. And I pray that the God of heaven will cause commotion to be in the camp of your, of your enemies in Jesus' name. That the powers of Senai Kerub that say you will not succeed. That the God of heaven will put them to shame in Jesus' name. That the angel of God will go out into the camp and scatter them in Jesus' name. That every coven of the witches of the wizards against you, the God of heaven will destroy them in Jesus' name. And number seven, Senai Kerub will be killed by his own. If you read the book of 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 27, it says, One day, 37 actually, sorry. So one day while he was uh, worshipping in the temple of his god, Nisroch, his sons, Adamalek and Shareza, killed him with the sword. And they escaped to the land of Ararat. The powers that fight against his God is saying, they themselves will turn on themselves. And I pray that will be their portion in Jesus' name. And that's one of those pray because of our time today. Let's quickly pray. Our first prayer point 
is, um, I just want to do this prayer. I say, Mighty God, confound the powers in the order of Shenakirub that have risen themselves against me and all that concerns me. Let them be, let those such powers be put to shame in Jesus' name. I just want to just be in the prayer and say, Oh God of heaven, every power of Shenakirub that have risen themselves against me, oh God, confound, resist, bind in the name of Jesus. Every power challenging me, oh God, let them be put to shame, oh God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. And we're just going to pray. I'm going to 2 Kings chapter 19, 32 to, 30, um, 32 to 33. He said, He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow there. By the way he came, he will return. I just want to pray and say, Mighty God, let COVID-19, the power in the order of Seneca Rup, return in the way it came. That it will not enter into our homes in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray. Oh God of heaven, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus and we declare, let, oh Lord God, every power in the order of Senakiru, oh God, go back in the way they have come in Jesus' name, that it do not enter into our city in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord of God. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you God, for this time, oh God, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. thank you for the word which you have given unto us, defeating Senakiru. And I pray, oh God of heaven, that every power in the order of Senakiru, oh God, I pray you will put to shame, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Even as you give us that promise, those seven promises, I pray, oh God of heaven, oh Lord, that it will not come into our city, neither shall any arrow of Senakiru be felt among us in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done, oh God, we give you praise in Jesus' name. We are praying. We pray. God has blessed you as you've watched this message. Now, if you would like more resources, then please visit our website at www.lightchapel.ca or call us at 403-800-7162 or best yet, fellowship with us at Unit 243-1830, 52nd Street, Southeast, Calgary, Alberta. In Canada, we are together every Sunday for worship at 10 a.m.